I started playing golf in October 2021, scoring an average of 105 plus. Fast forward to now, I have a best round of 83, and 95 is a bad day on the course. Today's video, I'll share with you 10 tips that have helped me half my handicap while still playing on a casual basis that can be applied to absolutely everyone. Enjoy. Tip number one for us high handicappers is to make the most of our range practice. Not fall into the trap that most of us do where we just hit balls repeatedly trying to hit the longest drive we possibly can. We need to start structuring these range practices to make sure that it benefits our game. For me, my personal favorite is the Top Tracer Virtual Golf. By using the Virtual Golf, you are simulating yourself going around the course, alternating different clubs, trying to find the fairways, trying to hit the greens and also avoid the hazards. It's a really good tool that you can use to easily simulate a round around the golf course. If you don't have access to a Top Tracer range, you can just go to a normal range. And like I said, instead of just hitting the same club over and over, what I like to do is again, try and simulate a hole. So I'll choose a distance. So say for example, 340 meters, I'll take my tee shot, see how far that roughly goes. And then I'll have a rough estimate on how far I have to hit the next shot. It just means that you're gonna alternate clubs as you would on the course. The idea of this is just to try and make your range practice as similar to an on-course experience as you can. So to summarize this section, the idea is to make your range session more structured. Whether that's playing the virtual golf or working on a certain aspect of your game, as long as we've stopped just going to the range and hitting 100 balls and having no idea what we're doing, we're onto a winner. Tip number two is ball striking. The reason that this is so important is obviously everyone's going to have different swings, but the fundamentals, especially with the iron shots, is you want to hit ball first and then hit the turf. What a lot of high handicappers do, which will make them struggle to improve, will hit the ground first and then the ball. This can work at the range when you're bouncing off a hard mat. However, when you come onto the course, you're going to end up chunking it and the ball is going to go absolutely nowhere and it's going to lead to a lot of inconsistencies in your game. Sometimes you get away with it, more often time you won't. And you'd be surprised of how much extra distance you're going to gain from hitting the ball first. Luckily, there's some very easy, simple drills to set up and to get instant feedback on this. I actually used one of these on my friend the other day. It was actually from a Bryson DeChambeau video. Obviously, we know how good he is. Um, but get some duct tape, put it behind the ball and then put the ball just in front so maybe like put an inch in front to start with and you can move it a little bit closer as you go on but by putting the duct tape there the idea is you hit the ball and leave the tape on the ground if the tape's still there then it means you've hit the ball first whereas if the tape is now stuck to your club or flung off into the range you know you've hit the ground first another way to do this instead of using tape is you can use a golf towel or a t-shirt uh, same same principle if you hit the t-shirt or hit the towel it's going to go flying and you know you've hit the ground first Moving on to another drill I stole off Bryson involves going into a bunker or even going to the beach on some sand, drawing a line and then working down the line, taking a full iron swing at each point, trying to build in that consistency of leveling out the club just after the line. It was actually really helpful for me. I found out that my miss generally isn't before the line, but it's actually afterwards. So I end up grounding out the club way too late. Tip number three, know your distances. So what we mean by this is finding out the distances that you hit each club. So you want to know carry distance and total distance, as this is going to differ for everyone. The easiest way to do this is either to go to a range of a tracking system or go to an indoor simulator. Hit about five balls of each club, but take out the irregularity such as shanks, hooks or miss hits, and then work out the averages for those five shots which you've hit well. Other things we want to identify at this point is what distances we are comfortable hitting. Everyone tends to have their own favorite distances, favorite clubs to use. We want to know that so we can plan for it on the course, as well as knowing our common shot shapes for all of our clubs. And most importantly for us higher handicappers is where we miss with these clubs so we can factor that in for when we're taking our shots. Last tip before we head out to a course, understand not everyone's gonna have access to one of these, but if you're able to go to a short game area where you can practice a couple of chips around the green, practice putting, that is gonna be huge in halving your handicap because these are the shots which, as you know, are gonna make the difference at the end of the day. Pre-round warm up. So ideally we want to get here a little bit early if we can. And if there's the option for a hitting net, hitting a couple in, but don't get don't try and get uh, too finicky and trying to do any like swing changes. We're just purely warming up the motion and hitting a ball into the net, like pitching wedge. Like maybe like five minutes, maybe you can change a couple of clubs. All right, so the more important warm-up area for us higher handicappers, and if you want to half your handicap, is the short game area. Have a couple of putts on the green to get to gauge the speed of the green. All right, so then just put a couple balls down to start with, and it's been pretty wet, so it should be pretty slow. And we're just going to start off with just putting a couple.
And then the drill I like to do for this is like a little ladder drill. If you get two to three balls and choose a hole or even just a line and put them about a meter apart. And then we're gonna put one and then put the next one. Good pace, just thought it was going more to the left. I take that information and then hopefully get this one close. And again, pretty close. All I want to do is really secure two putt from that kind of range. But Again, a little bit quicker than I was expecting. If you only have time for hitting net or the short game green, I personally would go for the green because you can learn more information about what the course is actually going to be like on the day. And the, the problem with us like higher handicappers is sometimes we hit too many things and then we start getting bad swing ports going into the round. Whereas judging a putt, a lot less uh, wiggle room for negative ports to come in and you're going to be more positive going into the round. And lastly, if you've got an opportunity to as well, just like this one, you can do a couple of chips just onto the green. So again, we're gonna miss those greens today. So we wanna practice what it's like to chipping onto the green. Uh, let's do a couple of those and then we head across to the first tee. Oh, get in, get in, oh, close. The one thing you want to focus on to drop your handicap is course management, which is unique to everyone. And we have a separate video on course management, which could go through it a bit more, in a bit more depth. Uh, so be sure to subscribe for that one. Yeah. We're gonna start things off with a, uh, so it's downhill, 146 meters to the middle. Um, don't want to go long. So again, course management, we want to avoid the worst hazards. Uh, so long is the worst case. If you land it a little bit front, it should roll onto the green is a little bit wet so we won't get as much roll out uh, it looks like winds going left to right so we're gonna aim to left center of the green and hope we get it there first swing of the day we just want to do a smooth swing as well don't worry about it too much pick your line and away we go oh, i thinned it a little bit but it's straight and we're on the green. A little low on the grooves, but on the green, can't complain. And that's exactly why it's important to do a little bit of course management on every hole. Every hole is different. Took out the, the main hazards of going long. Didn't hit it the cleanest, but you know, took out the possibility of hitting it very long. And we're starting the round off with a putt for birdie. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Step over your putt. Again, we've done that practice on the greens earlier. It was going um, right to left. And again, more distance control. We're not gonna worry about getting it in. We just wanna get it close. A little too soft, but again, take your time over these putts, drop your ego. If you need to line up, line up. I'm going to do that just to be safe for the video. Sometimes the nervy ones are the short ones. Okay, and then start things off with a par. Okay, so this course started you off with a nice easy par three, but then goes on to the stroke hole one, which again, important to note for us high handicappers and if you're looking to reduce your handicap. Hardest holes on the course are hardest for a reason. So drop the ego, play it smart. So if you're like over 18 handicap, you should really be playing this one as like a par five instead of a par four. And again, just want to get it in play. So course management, hazard off to the left, uh, tree next to the right here. Uh, we're hitting into wind. So just a smooth stroke with the five wood. Oh, I've hit that tree so many times. That's so annoying because that was almost perfect. Now we're in a horrendous position. Didn't plan on making this tip so soon, but uh, next tip. Very big for us is taking your medicine. All right, so as you can see, I'm here. I'm not blocked out, so I do have an approach into the fairway. So I'm gonna have a look at my five wood and see if I can get it up there. And again, we're playing it as a par five, so don't worry about the wall-on lost shot. The main thing is here is we want to avoid going into those trees. Was pretty unlucky as well, to be fair. 
Um, so here it's also important to know your shot shape. Um, so with the five wood, I tend to hook it if anything. I'm not gonna worry about chasing the distance I've lost. It's more just getting it up there. Okay, nice and low. <laughs> Trees are not 90% air, whatever they tell you, or 95% air. That was pure branch which I struck. Very unlucky, because I think that would have been a nice strike down the middle. However, played the sensible shot out into the middle, didn't chase it up down the line, and we're now back in the middle of the fairway. Again, before it's shot, we're gonna think about what we wanna do. Uh, so we're hitting uphill, into wind, uh, so I'm gonna go up two clubs, I'm gonna hit my seven iron here. If it's winter rules and it's clean in place, then make sure to take advantage of it. Oh, and I've hooked that off to the left. Should be all right, but we'll hit another one just in case we can't find that. That one's at the back of the green. <laughs> Damn it. All right, so now we've got a bit of a hard shot. So this is why we practice our short game. Uh, so I want to get up that hill onto the green. Okay, so I'm gonna take my 60 degree. Now, if you're not comfortable with the 60 degree, don't use it. But yeah, I'm normally pretty confident from here. And again, got to take our medicine. Oh dear. All right, so we're on some wet grass here. So very, like if you use the bounce here, you're probably gonna dig into the ground. So what I'm gonna do is do a little toe down with a 60 degree. So it should pop up a little bit and aim to the left of the flag. We just wanna get up that hill. Just like that. So that's the other seven iron which I hit. Landed just there. But we managed to chip up onto the green here. Again, stroke hole one, not the end of the world. So we're here for four, here for five, sorry. So this is my sixth shot. Uh, so I want to walk away here with a triple at worst. So just two putt. Okay, so it's downhill, right to left. Again, pace control from earlier. The greens do actually seem quite fast. I mean, they're not that quick, mate. Okay, and we're learning lessons early on in the round. But thankfully, walk away with a two putt. So unfortunately, hardest hole, I've walked away with a triple. So par triple, not too bad. All right, temporary tee box, not ideal. Feels like it's quite downhill, um, but that's what happens with the rain. Again, you've got to plan for the course here. It's a short par four though. Um, so dog leg to the left, a lot of space out right. So I'm gonna aim at that big tree right down there. Okay, we've hit an absolute perfect shot. Oh, go on. Maybe I need downhill tee boxes the whole time. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Yeah. Goes to show why you should never drop your head and get into a negative mindset. Just, uh, you know, forget that hole, move on. Another key tip uh, for having your handicap at the start of your golf career. Um, just be positive and, again, think smart. You know, some people would uh, try to make up for that one, take their driver and try and smack it direct at the green, not factoring in for their shot shape or factoring in where the worst miss was. So for me there, I know my shot shape with the uh, five wood is like a, a draw slash a hook. So I aimed off to the right and it's come into the left and I've hit that pretty perfect. And we have a very short chip onto the green. Okay, so we're pretty close to the green here on a short par four. Pins at the very back of a double or triple tiered green. Okay, because we want to get it to the back of the green and roll out. Oh, Trundle might be in the way here. And the lie isn't very forgiving for a wedge. Just going to take a nine iron, toe down, and hopefully roll it up to the green. Roll up, roll up, roll up. Get up there, get up there. Oh, sit. 
no, no, no. Oh, didn't quite get up the uh, top of the bank, but we're on the green. Still need practice on that one, but the main thing is it's more forgiving than uh, hitting the wedge like I did on the other one. So again, we learn from our mistakes early in the round. Uh, when it's wet ground, not a very favorable lie for a chip. Don't go for it and just uh, opt for a safer shot. So like a little toe down nine iron, like roll up there, unfortunately came a little short and it's rolled down onto that second tier. So again, worst case scenario, we don't get up the bank. So we want to make sure we get up there. Again, pace is the most important thing here. Didn't slow up as much as I expected and needed to go more left. Again, take your time, line it up. And we make the putt. That's why you need to practice on those putting greens. Um, we had gave ourselves a great shot in from the tee box. Okay, nine iron, terrible second putt. No, terrible first putt. But again, main thing is we got up the hill and on this occasion, we made it. Okay, so it brings me on to my next point is play clubs that you are comfortable hitting, confident hitting, and clubs that aren't gonna get you into trouble. <laughs> uh, for me, for example, you've seen off the longer tees, I've just gone for the five wood. Uh, so my driver isn't that strong right now, so I'm not playing it. So don't be, don't fall into the trap which every high handicapper falls into, brings the driver out on the par fours, gets themselves in trouble. Play clubs which you're confident with, and that can change throughout the round. As you saw, even just in this quick three holes, uh, the 60 degree, you know, I, I didn't fancy myself going for a wedge shot where I normally probably would have done. Went for the safer play with the bump and run with the nine iron, and got green and red. So. You know, play the safer ones and then you're gonna find yourself in much better situations. A thought process which can help you make these kind of decisions, the correct ones, is what we like to call them. Is when you stand over the ball and you're taking a shot. So for example, so this is the first par five. So normally people go uh, driver, but it's a bit narrow at the start. Pretty confident hitting my five wood right now. Um, but yeah, if you're ever indecisive, thinking to yourself, if you were offered $100 to make the shot, would you take that on? So you're given $100 to do your shot. So it could be driver or it could be, you know, you're chasing distance and you're in the trees. You're like, right, I'm gonna try and thread it through this gap. If there $100 on the line, would you back yourself to do it? If not, choose the other club. If you do, then by all means go for it. Just gone into the trees to the left there, but should be all right. But yeah, that's the, the kind of sludginess we're dealing with right now. But yeah, it may look like summer in the sky, but it's certainly winter on the ground. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying your summer golf, whereas us in New Zealand are struggling with winter golf. Although I hear the weather's not so great in the UK right now. Okay, so this could be one of those ones where it's a case of choosing whether you take your medicine or, or not, but also you need to look ahead of the course. So I'm on a long par five, uh, distance isn't going to be too much of an issue further down the line, so I could punch out here into the fairway and make certain. Going long into the other fairway is not too bad of a play, because I can always chip back across. The one thing I want to avoid is obviously going left into this tree here, um, which I think I only have to hit about three metres. So as long as I can hit three metres in front, I should miss that tree. Uh, five wood should be low enough that it doesn't come out and hit that. And also, again, playing my short shape, which is probably going to be a bit of a hook today by the looks of things. Um, should be okay with the five wood. You've caught into the tree, and yet we're just going to play a soft five wood out to the right there. I think I might have hit that too pure. I have to see. All right, so we're over here. Somehow managed to get into the center of the fairway. Um, so we'll take that. Uh, so yeah, just clipped that branch and must have come slightly left. But that's fine. We're in the middle of the fairway on a par five with probably about 150 meters to the pin. It's actually about 180 meters to the pin. Six iron at this one. Wind left to right, so go aim left of the green. It's downhill. Oh, we've absolutely nailed it onto the green. 
What a strike. I lost that because I looked up into the sun, but what a strike. Wow, to rescue a green and red from that is sensational. That is probably like one of the best shots I've hit in a long time. Um, so yeah, you know, put yourself in the fairway and it gives you the chance to hit these shots. So back to back green and regs, which I did not expect after the tee shot. I'm sorry, but look at that pitch mark here. So we'll repair that and then look at the ball, just stop there. And we've got a nice putt for birdie. But again, be realistic, drop your ego. We're not actually going for birdie here. It'd be nice to make it, yes. Um, but all I want to do is make sure I don't, I don't free putt here. If I can leave myself with a nice tap in par and walk away from this hole after the tee shot hitting the tree uh, with a tap in par, then I'll be laughing. But again, distance control is the main thing here. Good line. Oh, just a little short, but again, we've given ourselves a pretty comfortable little three footer, which again, we're going to line up. So yeah, line up your putts. Each one matters and a nice confident stroke into the hole. <laughs> well, that was missing then, can't lie. But um, yeah, so a nice par. And again, let's go on to the next tip. Can we just take a second though to appreciate how good that six iron was? <laughs> oh dear. It, um, irons have been a bit off recently, especially the long irons. So to whip one of those out on a slight downhill lie, take that every day. If only I could play that, that all the time. Um, but what's that? So par, triple, par, par. So again, by playing smart, we've kind of made up for that triple and we're on our way to shoot a good score. Whereas if I'd lost my head, that triple could have turned into a double, and the next hole, a triple, a triple, and then all of a sudden you've ruined your whole day. Um, whereas if you think a bit more logically, except bad shots are going to happen, we're probably going to have a better time on the course. Uh, just before we go into this hole, just a quick point about scoring, especially when you're a newer or higher handicapper. Understand the scoring, but also don't be too strict on yourself. So if you're, what I mean by that is if you're scoring like 118, 120, me personally, I don't think there's any point in you hitting a tee shot, going into thick rough, and then trying to hack it out. Just take a drop, put it into there. Maybe don't penalise yourself so heavily. Hit a couple of mulligans, just so you start hitting the ball out of where you're supposed to hit the ball, like the fairways, uh, not the thick rough. You're not losing balls, and your score's not just inflating, because at the end of the day, the difference between going from like 120 to 100 is actually really significant. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes a lot more smart decisions. Like if you start hitting shots which are going to be in play opposed to trying to hit the best shot every single time and understanding that scoring is actually more based off how good your bad shot is opposed to how good your good shot is, you're going to drop down to 100 real easy. Uh, and then when you start getting around that 100 mark, then obviously you do want to be scoring like properly. Like so You understand the significance of going out of bounds, losing the ball, going into hazards because then you understand why again it's so important to find the fairway opposed to risking it and going into a hazard where you're going to cost yourself more shots so for me uh, I've stuck around like kind of like I went down to like as low as like 16 handicap and now I'm kind of plateaued at like 18 handicap because basically my tee shot has just always been a weak point uh, now I've started to realize that I needed a bit more assistance from someone who knows what they're doing so now I'm going through uh, a bit of a transition and working with someone who is like a professional and can help me on my swing uh, because the other parts of my game have been pretty strong uh, but that's holding me back so once you do kind of like plateau then do seek further advice or if you've got the option to do then go seek further advice anyway what you can do is you can subscribe to my channel because I'm doing a 30 I'm doing a practicing golf every day for 30 days which will be out soon and you'll be able to see the difference which it makes when you actually go through uh, and have someone help you who knows what they're doing. So again, par three, we're gonna look at the hazards. We looked at the hazards, so there's a bunker at the front left, and also uh, off to the right, you're in some trees. So uh, what you could do is if you're not feeling very confident, you could just lay up and play a short shot, a nice short chip on, no harm in doing that. If you're feeling a bit more confident, then you know, the one place to miss here is far left or far middle. So we're gonna aim slightly to the left of the pin, not too far left, and slightly to the left of the pin, and then, yeah, with the eight iron, which should take us to the middle of the green. And worst case scenario, I'll go a little bit long. So yeah, we go with the seven iron. 
because uh, we've got a bit of wind into us is what I forgot to factor in there. So again, hazard is short left, safe is long left or long middle, and we do not want to miss short, but we're hitting into wind, so we're going up another club. Make sure we go long here. And that's a little bit longer than I expected because I hit that a little pure. <laughs> but we hit the tree at the back and we missed the bunker. Um, so hopefully uh, we should be okay. Well, we can see that the bunker would have been <laughs> out of play anyway. Uh, so it did hit a little bit further than I was expecting, but got a lucky bounce off the tree. When I meant long left, I meant this kind of region, like around here end up just clipping this bit of the tree here and it dropped down just next to this mushroom but again now we don't have bunker into play just going to do a little toe down chip land it past that track mark and hopefully roll it onto the green again it is quite wet so a bit cautious that it doesn't get out of there Roll out, roll out, and again, couldn't have done much more than that. We'll take that. Take the flag out of it, leaning towards it. But again, the easiest tip for shaving off some scores is to make sure you avoid the free putt, which we've managed to do so far. And from this distance, I'd hope to do that as well. Uh, definitely got a chance to make par here though. That's the main thing. But again, chipping down onto a on a downhill green, wanted to make sure we landed it before because otherwise we'd have rolled off to the back here. And it should be going a little bit uh, right to left at the end. Oh, that's too soft. <sighs> but tap in bogey, which is going to score as well. Yep, a little bit annoyed about it, but I'm not going to let it ruin my mood. Playing quite well. Just get on with it. Okay, so last hole of the video and last tip of the video, and this is gonna be the biggest one for uh, reducing your handicap in terms of number. If that's all you're really after, this is the one thing to do. Yeah, this is what a lot of people do. Uh, so whether people do this intentionally, I assume they probably do. Yeah, it's nothing special. Uh, I'm gonna show you now. In fact, I've been showing you this whole round. <laughs> Four left. Bit too left on that one. People that have viewed the channel may have an idea of what this is. Um, but quite simply, it's play the same course often. Uh, so if you've got a home course and you play your home course very often, you're going to get familiar with where the hazards are, where to hit, how to play it. And it's just, it's so much easier than going and playing a new course. However, I don't really like to do that as it's not as fun. So yeah, as I track over to this ball on the far left of the other fairway, um, basically, yeah, it's, it's, I personally don't like playing the same course over and over because um, A, I don't really care about my handicap because uh, at the end of the day, that doesn't really mean you're a better golfer if you've just submitted more scores at your home course. Uh, the amount of people which I played with who are like 10, 12 handicap, they play a new course and they're scoring in the hundreds just mental you just like, I understand people have bad days but it's happened far too many times so me personally I think the number 10 tip instead of just uh, playing your home course over and over the main thing is to have fun and go out there and challenge yourself that's by playing new courses playing different shots uh, but understanding when to play your smart shots and your safe shots and I've actually managed to get away with this I've come so far left I've actually avoided all the trees <laughs> okay so you go 9-9 nine, nine at this one Again, left is a left is our friend, right is our enemy, so we're gonna go slightly to the left of the pin. And I've pushed it off to the right, but because we aim left, we're on the green. So again, just going on that thing when you're playing a familiar course, 
Again, I knew that over there was a horrible miss way off to the right. If I missed left, it would have rolled down this bank more than likely. Uh, so because of that, my miss off to the right still had plenty of room. And I ended up uh, finding the green. Okay, let's finish off this uh, video with showing why that putting at the start is more important than hitting 100, pit, hitting 100 shots into the net. Right to left quite considerably. You know, I just want to lag putt this up there. It's uphill most of the way. Should snap in. There we go, We're giving ourselves a good chance. I went a little bit too far to the right, but pace is good. Pace is good. And again, take our time with the putts, line them up. And this is how you're gonna have your handicap from like that 30 mark, like the high 30s down to like the 18s fairly easily with not necessarily any lessons, um, but just smart play in general. And in for par. So yeah, finish on the par. So if you want to see my course management video, uh, how you can manage yourself around the course as a higher handicapper more effectively and score better and in turn lower your handicap. Be sure to subscribe for that, that will come shortly. And other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day out there and score well.